in some respect, life is a series of tests and competitive events. Sometimes we compete against one another, while other situations require us to meet specific predetermined standards. Now, this distinction is also true of the instructional setting. For many years, our measurement programs have required students to compete against one another. When their test scores are placed on a graph, the usual result is a bell-shaped curve. A few students fail, and about the same number make a high grade, but most fall somewhere in between. This concept, known as norm reference testing, dates back to the turn of the century. During World War I, norm reference tests were designed to determine mental and aptitude qualifications of personnel entering military service. Even today, when selections must be based on an individual's relative standing within a group, norm reference tests are used, such as in the airman qualifying examination which is used to group individuals according to their aptitudes for certain career fields, and the weighted airman promotion system, in which comparative test results are used as a factor in identifying the best qualified individuals from a given group. But when we need assurance that each student can do a specific job, norm reference tests are not adequate. In this film, another in the instructional technology series, we will introduce a concept of measurement called criterion reference testing. Point out some of the advantages of this concept and look at examples of how criterion reference tests can be used. In the next few minutes, we will present several educators, each pointing out applications of criterion reference testing. One of these educators is an associate professor of education for the University of California at Los Angeles. He is Dr. Stephen Klein, author and lecturer in tests and measurement. Dr. Klein. There is an ever-increasing demand in education and training institutions to improve our ability to determine the effectiveness of instructional programs. This demand to make programs more accountable for their outcomes has given rise to focusing attention on what the student has actually learned. We want to know what a student can do as a result of participation in a given course. In order to do this, we must first develop precise instructional objectives. These objectives describe, in behavioral terms, what the student should be able to do by the end of the program, the conditions under which this performance can be expected to occur, and the standard or quality of performance required. The second step in determining whether a program is successful is to find out whether the student has met the objective. To do this, one needs tests that are specifically designed to measure the student's ability to accomplish these objectives. Traditionally, however, our tests have not focused on instructional outcomes, but rather have tried to measure the relative differences between students. These tests are still valuable for such purposes as career guidance and selecting students for college. But if the purpose of the testing is to determine whether an instructional program was successful in the sense that the students achieved course objectives, then we must use measures that are specifically designed for this purpose. These measures are called Criterion Reference Tests. I am Joe Sherrod, Coordinator of Communications for the Fort Worth Public School System. Our curriculum makes driver's education available to all high school students who have reached their 15th birthday. The purpose of our program is to produce better driver citizens. Driver education in Fort Worth schools includes classroom instruction, simulator instruction, and on-street driving. During the on-street driving phase, the student demonstrates his ability to perform various maneuvers previously experienced in the simulator phase. For example, one of our behavioral objectives requires the student to safely parallel park an automobile. In this case, we do not accept a verbal 
our written description of procedures and techniques for parallel parking is evidence that the objective has been achieved. Instead, we expect him to actually parallel park without contacting another car, bumping the curb, or unduly blocking traffic. Through this process, the student demonstrates the performance and behavior specified in the objective. Success in this kind of performance testing activity is one of the best indicators of a student driver's ability to succeed and survive on our streets and highways. And we should not overlook the value of this teaching and testing activity in terms of self-confidence acquired by the student driver. I'm Captain Sam Page, manager of flying instruction at American Airlines. In our training program, we designed instruction and criterion reference tests to cover precisely what our flight crews need for job performance. We wrote specific behavioral objectives based on these job requirements and the standards for FAA certification. We then translated these objectives into individualized segments of instruction and let our people go through the program at their own pace. To assure that each student is achieving these objectives, Progress checks are made as the student proceeds through the instruction for such areas as pneumatic systems, fuel system, and emergency procedures. In addition, our instruction has been improved through teaching and testing activity in the flight simulator phase, such as the simulated landing we're about to see. kind of simulator you've just seen and frequent progress checks, we have been able to reduce flying training hours, cut total course length, and at the same time improve quality and enhance safety. We know our instructional system works because performance tests administered by both company and FAA check pilots show that flight crews qualify in less aircraft time than ever before. In short, we have enhanced the efficiency and effectiveness of our instruction through criterion reference testing through various phases of training. Systems trainer, cockpit procedures trainer, simulator, and finally, the aircraft. What we have in criterion reference testing is measurement related directly to specific objectives. Identifying students who have achieved an objective versus those who have not. It's a go, no go situation. A student either achieves an objective or he doesn't. If he doesn't, either the instruction isn't doing the job it was intended to do, or the student lacks the aptitude or is not sufficiently motivated to achieve. In the early steps of instructional system development, Real-world job tasks are analyzed and training requirements are determined. Based on these tasks and training requirements, objectives and associated criterion reference tests are then developed. All of this is done before the instruction is designed, assuring that the instruction directly supports what the student needs to know and do on the job. What criterion reference testing does is, first, check student progress throughout the course. It tells us if the student is acquiring the knowledges, skills, and attitudes represented in the objective. Second, it identifies student problem. After a problem is identified, the student and the instructor can correct it. And third, it serves as a quality control measure. When weaknesses are identified, the instruction can be revised to improve effectiveness. Check progress, identify student problem, and control course quality. These are the functions of criterion reference testing, and it helps instructors do their job. It gives me a handle on the progress of each student. I know when he needs help and when he's ready to begin a new unit of instruction. Effective progress checks in our criterion reference testing program 
ensure that ability in one area does not conceal inability in another. For example, one of our students recently missed two out of 40 problems on a test, a pretty good score. Unfortunately, the two problems missed related to a critical step in maintaining a landing gear system. Instead of receiving a pretty good score, the student failed to achieve that objective and was given additional instruction. Through criterion reference testing, we were able to identify and correct the student's deficiency before it caused this kind of trouble on the flight line. We've said that a criterion reference test comes directly from the objective. We test only the behaviors required of the student. That is, the knowledges, skills, and attitudes essential for successful job performance. There are times when the relationship between the objective and the test is so close, they are written almost alike. When we applied ISD to the training for Tactical Air Command's A-7D aircraft, we were able to reduce test development time because the task statements, objectives, and the tests were virtually the same. If the pilot's job requires performance of a given task, we have to teach it and the student must demonstrate proficiency in performance of the task. Our tests, therefore, read almost exactly like the task statements and the objectives. In writing the criterion test, we focus attention on the three basic elements of the objective. Performance, conditions, standards. P, C, S. The objective gives us the performance to be measured, the conditions for performance, and the minimum acceptable standard. For example, take this undergraduate pilot training objective. Using the P-38 electrical system bus schematic, identify the sources of AC power and the aircraft components which will be inoperative in the event of complete or partial AC power failure. This objective specifies the knowledge required of the student and is fundamental to the development of skills necessary for later task performance. The problem is how to determine whether the student is learning and can perform. Often the most ideal situation is teaching and testing in the job environment, simply because the students can experience real world performance, conditions, and standards. Whether they are flying, navigating, or performing a technical skill. But teaching and testing in the job environment can also be expensive, impractical, or create a safety hazard. And the cost of equipment for a job-like environment may be prohibitive. Besides, how many activities can afford to give up operational equipment or facilities for teaching and testing? From a safety viewpoint, it is obviously not feasible for a pilot to encounter an actual in-flight emergency, such as an electrical power failure, before evaluating his skill and taking corrective action. In such cases, simulation can do the job. It allows dangerous or emergency situations to be practiced in safety. And most tasks can be simulated. Simulation works for motor skills training, for identification training, for troubleshooting and problem solving. And simulation is effective in preparing people to function as a team. Simulator devices can be relatively unsophisticated or quite elaborate. A trainer can be used to simulate operational equipment, since the trainer can present the student with various normal and emergency situations. This allows the student to practice in a safe environment without interfering with operational activity. Yet we can routinely monitor, objectively critique, and accurately measure achievement against the objective. When real world tests or simulation are not feasible, the achievement of objectives may be checked through written responses. While written tests are inadequate for measuring motor ability, they can be quite effective, as well as inexpensive, 
in evaluating the achievement of certain knowledge-related objectives, such as those which require the student to state a fact, name an object, explain a concept, or apply a principle. As this example illustrates, well-designed test questions can be used to evaluate a student's ability to apply knowledge. Let's take a moment to look at this question and see if you can recall a couple of points about CRT. Now, here are the answers. Because criterion reference testing requires the student to demonstrate acquired knowledges, skills, and attitudes essential for performing future job assignments, it's the best way to measure student achievement. It's the way we measure change. And that's our business. Causing specific desired changes in the learner.